Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. Guy's still hammering away on the independent Chevelle back here. I've got two and a half, three weeks, maybe less. I don't know. Before this has got to be on a trailer, headed to Florida for its first burnout competition. I want to get the fuel system taken care of today in preparation for that big block. So we'll strap in a fuel cell, fuel pump, fuel lines, and I don't know, some sort of Alien fittings. Then I think we'll put the battery back there in the body carrier as well. Before we dive in pinky toes first, I'm gonna give you an update on the paint here. I've been working away on this door, you could probably tell, and I wanted to kind of come up with a method to try to save the rest of this paint before I get to clear coating it. This is red scotch Bright and some simple green, I believe. And then this side, I tried some soap and water and some 600 grit. About the same outcome, but this side, of course, is a lot smoother probably better for clear coat. But my big question is, do I try to blend in a little bit more red and white or leave it as is? And the reason I ask is that's really the only red on the car, maybe a little bit back here, but red here is gone. And then of course the roof is just basically solid rust. Now this here, I've already Fox tinted in some white. So this is me. Otherwise all this was just tan basically. So I thought about trying to find kind of a reddish color and just spritz in a little bit and then we'll sand it out. So it's gonna be, you know, a very odd pattern. Same up here, try to make it look just as weathered and faded. Or do I just sand the car down and whatever it is, it is, and we just tss, 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 get some clear on it. I don't know, I don't know. I'm building this car for us, so I value your opinion bleep bloop it down there and I think the general consensus will tell us what I need to do with this paint but I need to start planning because I'm on a limited time schedule here so I got to start lining all this up same with this fender here do I sand on it try to bring some of that blue out or at least try to get some of these stars back or do we just leave it I don't know I don't know anywho back to here this is what we got now I changed my mind on the fuel cell. There was a 17 gallon in here. That's sitting right there. I think I'm gonna use the 17 gallon for the 777 car because I need a little bit more capacity. And I got this 15 gallon and it's gonna fit in here a little bit better. And then I got a pump I'll show you in a minute that's gonna drop in here. This is a rollover vent. We need to plumb that in with a bulkhead fitting. These get capped and I believe this is a zero to 90 GM. But if not, the gauges I have coming, we can program on them. Battery box, I've been going back and forth. Kind of be nice to have it over here, a little bit more separation. But then that puts it right in line for a tire fire because we have no floor. Here, we still can bolt it into the frame back here, which is a requirement but it comes a little closer. I'm kind of thinking the lesser of the two evils is here. We can still bolt it into the frame. I can get the battery in and out because we all know that's gonna be dead every day. Plus, when I roll this on its side, we can come in here and cut the cables or whatever else. Eventually, I'm gonna have a battery switch, but I just don't have time to do that right now. So she's gonna be hot running down there. But basically, we're gonna strap this in. We're gonna have a feed and return line for the pump and we'll have this rollover line we got a vent as well and then i think we'll go ahead and drill this in get that mounted as well and start planning for that and then we're going to loosely run some lines up along the frame and then i got to have a bunch of extra out here because we're going to have a fuel pressure regulator here and then one of them comes into the efi one comes back out to that regulator and then back down in there and then Got to tuck them in, find a route, get them away from those headers, because them things are just going to be glowing red. Well, that's the plan anyway. 
Someone noticed, believe it or not, that I was missing this bolt the other day. Got one on the way. This is a quick ratio steering box, which is going to be really nice. I think it's only, I can't remember, one and three quarter turns of the wheel is full lock. So it's not going to take a lot to get these tires just doing the thing out there on the skid pad. That'll be nice. Anyway, let's take a look at that pump. We got to start there, drop that in that fuel cell. I've got a universal drop-in pump here by Holly. It's completely assembled. The only thing you have to adjust is the height of the socks. I mean, they couldn't have made it any easier than that. I bought a 12-bolt flange tank here. So I take that off. Basically, once I set my height, I just drop it in. Got a measure from the top of the cell to the bottom here. What's that say? Nine inches? Okay. And then just take an Allen key, pop these socks on, adjust this. And there are these little pieces on here you can break off if need be, if you've got a shallow tank, but this will go from seven and a half all the way to 12 inches. So really it fits in almost every tank. And if you have one without holes in it, you could just use the gaskets or this flange here as a template, drill up your own holes and drop it in. I'm gonna get this adjusted and bolted in quick. Get on off of there. Yes. <sighs> Double check this and it's actually eight and, oh, 15 sixteenths, give or take a squoosh. So I put these up to about eight and three quarter. When they get full of gas, they might balloon just a little bit. You don't want those to lay on the bottom of the tank. Tighten this up here. Now all I gotta do is just set this in, but I'm gonna put it to where the fittings are towards the back of the cell when it's in the trunk so I can just shoot off with the hoses there and then the fill up neck will be on the back side. Is that right? Yeah, towards the bumper. You know what I'm saying. Got it laid back in here again with the strapalizers on it. Threw some tape over this now that we got it on the tank. Just so spit or I guess whatever else would fall in there. This is kind of where I'm thinking. I wanted a little bit of room here, so if I ever do something crazy like Hot Rod Drag Week or something, I can fit some cowboy boots, a couple Lunchables, and Whalen tapes in here. And then I got a little bit of room over here. Gotta be careful though, it'll fall through. And then we can kind of box this up nice here. And I think I could still hit that frame there. So I'm gonna get a paint marker, mark some holes here, get the drill in. Should I measure this just to make sure it's, ah, just shoot the eye down it. Yeah, that looks, you know, good enough for the girls we date. Pop a hole there, one there. Can I even get in here now? That seemed to go well. Now I'm gonna take the bottoms here, since they're a straight, you know, have holes in them. The other one's got that shape and they can do this. Now I'm gonna lay these in here and make sure the spread on my holes is right before I start to drill in. And looks like I nailed one and completely missed the other one. Good thing I double checked. Would have made it work anyway, but you know. Guy's gonna use a slightly larger auger than my hole here. That way when I mess this up, I got a little more waller room to get some hardware in there. Wow. Just needed to put her on turbo mode. Yep. Okay. Well, this is looking pretty snazzy. Next thing I want to do is kind of plan for that rollover vent bulkhead fitting, which may be there or down here, but I definitely want to try to go through there for the fuel lines. And then we've also got battery and if I'm planning ahead far enough, I probably need two leads going through there as well. One's a fusible 12 amp. We're gonna put a distribution block somewhere in the cabin. And then I believe the EFI needs one directly through the battery as well. So I got a two inch grommet that we're gonna drill in there and that should fit everything. It'll be a little bit tight, but it should work. But let's get this car up in our teeth here and get underneath so we can make sure that we're gonna have room to run all this to kind of come up with the plan. Guys gotta to remember to do some undercoating where the floor patches went in and then frame patch, frame patch. If I remember right, there's seven total frame patches in here and I think we also fixed, uh, there's another one. 
two cracks, something like that. I also got the airlines ran for the air shocks. Those go up to there, but this will get melted in the first tire fire, but eh, that's okay. So I think we're aiming for up here somewhere. All of this stuff can come out anyway. So how is that in there? I don't know. Maybe just need to take a death wheel and zip that off or just leave it, ignore it. So if I go to the right, farthest right, I can come through here. And then I think we want to stay away from that drive shaft, obviously. Boy, I don't know. I want to end up probably coming through here. We'll attach it to the floor. This is going to come out like that, I guess. But we'll come through here and we'll sneak it behind this and basically come up here up to the inner fender well, which I'm still waiting on. Those were back ordered, of course. But I want to try to keep it as far over as I can because we'll have those big headers coming through here and maybe some side exhaust or I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet. Uh, I've spent quite a few minutes in here. I think what we're going to do is come through here, come underneath here, attach it right to the floor, and then get over to this frame rail as quick as we can. That's about as far over from the drive shaft as I can get. I don't want to get too close to the coil, but it's also on the outside of the suspension travel. So I think that's probably our best bet there. Okay, plan. So this is that area we were looking at, and I think right there is where that clamp thing is. So I'm gonna go right there. Nope, right there. Sure, went through. And then this guy will be rollover vent, need that. How about right there? Now we're back to bolting in the fuel cell here. I'm using some big old 7 16 hardware. It'd be nice if this fuel cell stayed in place when I hit the wall in second gear. That's loud. Why are you so angry? There we go. That's tighter than a 74 Monte Carlo door seal and I ain't kidding you. So I got my vent line mocked up in here and basically what I want to do is come down, do a loop, and then I'm gonna go through that hole there and I'm gonna use a bulkhead fitting so there's a nut on the backside. And we'd put a check valve in there too, but this tank actually has a check valve in it. Could put a 90 here, but these fittings ain't cheap. And I ain't kidding you. And the intention, I suppose, is to make it difficult for fuel to come out, hence the check valve, but we do want it to vent the fumes and everything. So I got it marked down here with a piece of tape where I think I want that cut. So I'll take this out and we'll get this done first. Get that fitting on. And then I've got the rest of the line rolled out on the floor here. And basically I took both ends together. I'm gonna to stretch it out, find half, cut on it, and then we'll plumb both those, and bring them up front. I'm gonna coil the extra up here. I bought enough, hopefully, to do like I said earlier, make all this circus up here happen. But for now, I'm just gonna coil it up and zip tie it somewhere up here and tape off the ends. That way everything back here is ready to go. And once we get the inner fender wells, and the rad support and everything and kind of, you know, the rest of the body. Then a guy can start planning the rest of it. I might not even do it till the engine's in. So there's the bottom side right there, what it looks like. Here's that push through grommet. And then I got all this cleaned up and I'm actually gonna try to use this bolt hole for when the lines come through and we'll put a clamp in here, hold them up tight here. So we have plenty of clearance coming over. Of course I ran a zip tie down there. This I'm going to do the same over here, keep it nice and neat to that push through grommet. This is going to work out great, so the wiring will lay over like that. And I'll put some sort of wrap or something on that. And then we're going to have two 90s here, basically, that are going to head that way, that come off of two straights with O-rings. 
and I'm gonna get that plugged in quick and then we'll get under the car and we'll start running both those lines through here and I think we might have some original fuel line that we can take off the car and maybe use some of those same bolt holes again with some some sort of clamp or hanger some of you fellers might be curious how this AN stuff works so I'm going to show you how to put one or two fittings on it's actually very simple it looks complicated but it's not they make fancy slicing tools and hot knives and just get yourself a sharp death wheel set it on an edge like this because you want to cut it at a 90 degree and just make sure that you wrap it with tape here and I'm going to cut into that tape so the ends don't fray so bad this wheel creates some heat you saw some smoke there and that also helps keep this end nice and neat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now a guy can go a little crazy with all the tools to put these fittings on but a couple crescent wrenches or a vice grip feller can get it done it just depends on how pretty you want your fittings to be if you don't mind nicking them up some basic tools will work black marker helps to hide some of those ask me how I know all I have is this locking crescent wrench yes that's a real thing a subscriber actually gave this to me on a meet and greet and I've been using it a lot and on the other end I'm using this aluminium crescent wrench this is specifically for fittings doesn't mar them up as bad but regular crescent wrench will work first thing a feller does is just unscrew the fitting here and you're just going to work that onto your line I like to give them a twist and a push and bring it all the way down and you can look in here and see when that's flush on the inside there's a little edge or a ridge all around and that's good there now I got some hose assembly lube here but you can use WD-40 or spit or beer whatever you have laying around lube up this end here and then all you do is just push this end in and start twisting and this thread is going to catch here like that now you start twisting them together this is where working in a vise might be handy you can lock one side down just put some paper towels or something like that on it but I don't now as you're tightening this you really want to pay attention to this side of the hose as you're threading this in you don't want to be walking your hose out at the same time so if you're not used to doing this or you got bad eyeballs like me guy could run a piece of painters tape or something around this edge so you could really watch it closely you want to make sure that this is seating in there firmly well she's starting to look like something finally should just be enough room like I say and sneak a battery wire and a couple other leads and I got to bring this uh, sending unit over too almost forgot about that in with this bundle going forward so we'll have I don't know how many are here 18 or something plus that one plus a couple more yeah it might be a little tight um okay yeah well while the guy was in here I went ahead and got the e-brake cables out of the way got the actual brake lines out and the old fuel line got these in I need to put a clamp up here I'm just gonna wait till I get the wiring in I ran a red zip tie along the return line all the way through this and on the extra up here as well and red will mean return for me so I never have to retrace this and I'm sure I'll forget and I ended up splitting these like this because I'm going to jam everything else in the middle and then I'll come back and zip tie all this together so it's in a nice bundle and I think that's going to work out pretty good let's bring her back down again and mark up this battery box and basically we want to hit this frame rail right here there's a ready rod or a through rod threaded rod it's a threaded rod and we'll double nut this and that threaded rod will come up well that's in and looks sharper than a toddler's toenails but blessed me I forgot to put the fill fill tray in here I even had this assembled so I wouldn't forget I gotta put this on the feed line probably right about there I want it easily accessible so we can clean this out if need be so I'm just gonna disconnect this quick yeah. throw a couple fittings on get this in place and before we fire this up I'm gonna disconnect everything blow some air through it and then we'll disconnect the front connect the lines back here 
When we prime the pump, we'll push some fuel through, make sure that we don't have any crud or anything in here. Two more fittings and this project's right in the bag. There we go, that's installed. I think that's pretty much it. Call this done for now. I got the other lines just kind of zip laid up here for now. And then the ends are duct taped off. And that'll work, and then once we start assembling, I'll just kind of flip them up out of the way. Well, hey there, guy. We got an important part of the puzzle just knocked right out of the park today, but there's still a lot to do here on Independence. By the way, I have never once done this on the channel, but there's so many new people here. And I'm getting a lot of emails and DMs and comments of where to find merchandise, like these shirts or hats, and there's, I think we have like 20 different shirts or something. I don't know, there's a lot of them. It's at vicegripgarage.com, and there's even one of Independence back here. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.